Kevin Roberts. Thank you so oh, much sir, for joining me. It's been uh, in the works for some time Absolutely now, and I'm so excited for this one. Thank you for joining me on the Watch Collection. Glad to be here. Let's kick off with just a little brief on, on mm -hmm. and maybe um, what you did work-wise professionally. I know you've now retired and That's you're spending right. too money up, too much money on watches. Absolutely. Uh, and then and then maybe just a, a quick view on how you got into watches in the first place. Sure. Yeah. So I was in construction previously. That was my profession. I used to be a cost manager, stroke project manager, um, primarily prime and super prime resi. And my offices I used to work for was in Mayfair, uh, just down in Dover Street. So every lunchtime I would go in down Old Bond Street, popping into all the boutiques, saying hello, looking in the windows, thinking, oh, I love that watch, I love that watch. IWC, Amiga, oh, I love that. Speedmaster, oh, Langer, oh, oh Grand Langer one, absolutely. So, yeah, just... So basically your net take-home every month was less. Was, was, was less. Was yeah. less. <laughs> Always in debt, always yeah, in debt. Brilliant. But uh, brilliant. yeah, so yeah, got into watches initially quite recently, um, in seriously, around about eight to ten years ago. Really? What was it? What got, got you? <sighs> That's a very, very good question. I would say um, working in the area, that didn't help, certainly. Mm. But my first serious watch um, was probably a Breitling. That was a bit longer, and I thought that was it. Because uh, I wanted something different. I wanted the Chrono. It was an any digital one. Hmm. So, um, so I bought a Breitling, and that serviced me well. But I thought, it's time, for, time to move on from that. Hmm. And I was in uh, Gatwick Airport, and I came across a blue uh, CK2998 from hmm. Amiga, hmm. just been released into the edition. I thought, oh my God, it was instant love. <laughs> Instant love. I had to have it. They didn't have it there, but I managed to get one. They sent it to me. They got some in and sent it to me. So, so that was it. You, you did the deal there and then. Did the deal there and then. And it was then shipped. It later. was shipped to me, yeah. And were you going away on holiday or were you going away? I was, holiday? yeah. We're were going... So on holiday, you were salivating about it. Absolutely. <laughs> I, I was chasing them every, every other week. Where's yeah. the watch? Where's the watch? Um, and then from there, yeah, got into Amiga because you could actually get Amigas at that point. 10 years ago, 18 years ago, and um, yeah, never looked back. Hmm. So Amiga was certainly my first love, um, hmm. as, and moving on from this, certainly Speedmasters. Um, I love those moments because um, I've tried to connect the dots on some of the purchases myself over the years, and those mm -hmm. moments where it's just pure emotion. Oh and, God, and, yeah. And, and those are the best because yes. you don't even need to think about it. No. You, you're done. Yeah. Straight away you're done. You're like, wow, that's it, done. Now I'm thinking, how am I going to make that happen? How am I going to make it work? <laughs> uh, and, and actually one of the funniest things was uh, when we were chatting before we started, you said, you know, I have retired. Mm -hmm. You have stopped work. Yes. But you are thinking about having to go back to work oh, because boy. now there's, there's an issue with cash flow again. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> I've got a problem. I've certainly got a problem. Yeah. Um, could be worse. Could be mm -hmm. proper drugs or... Yeah, well, that's what I keep telling my wife. Unfortunately, it's, unfortunately, it doesn't fly. She's on the brink of chucking me out, but that's yeah. a side note. Um, <laughs> so, Kev, tell me, you, you, you've brought two watches today, but, yeah. but of course you have a larger collection. And the fun part mm. about the series is that um, there needs to be some curation here. So tell us a little bit about what you've got at home, mm -hmm. maybe a little bit about the brands that attract you and why, and then maybe why you've chosen these two that we've got here. Okay, uh, certainly. I mean, obviously, um, I'm a big fan of value for money because being a cost consultant, that's the first thing you try and do. <laughs> <laughs> Clients always say, oh, can you make it cheaper? Can you make it cheap? What's the best value? Yeah. And I have to say, Oris at the moment, they are knocking it out of the park. Mm. I mean, I've got a, at the moment, um, the Social Club edition on, um, which retails for under £2,000. Uh, it's their Diver 65, and it is absolutely stunning. I love it. Um, there was a lot of work gone involved with this particular piece. Um, we've got, last count, 37 different chapters worldwide. And um, basically, it was all a collaboration design with the 37 heads worldwide and um, Holstein. Mm -hmm. So we, they came up with the design and there was, there was criteria. It had to have a no date and had to be a color which was different to everything else. So they've gone for an off-white black bezel. It's, it's just a, oh, a very lovely. simple. Yeah, that's lovely. But uh, the best thing about it is that you can buy it from the sh from retail, either from the shop or online, and depending on which boutique or chapter you belong to, the case back is uh, different in each region. Yeah. So this one's got London, yep. um, 
obviously if, if there's money in so instance Glasgow's got one Paris have got one all the case backs are different but uh, and so I could buy that but not being a mem not being part of the absolutely okay. absolutely you can certainly buy this mm -hmm. um, so it's under two grand and it's fantastic I mean it's based on a Salita movement and it's a modified they call it a modified seven 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 one movement mm. but it's, it's, it's yeah it's beautiful and that's why I, I love Oris I, I'm a big big sucker for Oris at the moment and it's interesting actually that you touch on value there because I think that is an important part of this um, but what is it about Oris because they seem to be activating the community at a yeah. grassroots level like no other brand and and, and in some ways I, I feel like they're also very deep into things that obviously tick boxes so they're, they're very deep into the environmental yeah. stuff uh, they're independent mm-hmm but it sometimes can feel like these things are pushed. And, and actually, at Oris, it doesn't feel like that. No, It's no. fair to say, it doesn't feel like that. Absolutely right. Uh, uh, why, why Oris? Because I feel like they're growing and growing. Every year, they seem to be developing momentum. And Kermit's come along now, and he's super, supercharged it. Absolutely, absolutely. I mean, Oris, uh, basically, Oris didn't follow the, the bandwagon. I think they actually set it when it came to environmental, mm. um, saving the planet. I mean, they've always done um, events, you know, um, they were going out and cleaning the streets. I mean, last year, um, don't even know, I'm a founder of Red Bar Southeast, mm -hmm. and we did a combination with Oris down in Brighton. Mm -hmm. So we did a beach clean down there. Mm. Oris were more than happy to come along um, and help us out and do that, and they did a presentation. But uh, yeah, I mean, and now they've gone into the bandwagon of um, social, uh, gone away from um, proper diamonds and um, lab grown mm -hmm. on a couple of their pieces mm -hmm. now as well. And they've always been part of the um, recyclable, um, you know, just want to do something different for the, for the environment. And I think, yeah, it, it is, everybody's jumping onto that bandwagon, but I think Oris were pretty much one of the first. They've developed their, their factory, got solar panels, mm -hmm. um, all of their um, members of staff, you know, management now have um, electric cars. Um, they stop, they're reducing their flights, flights going from country to country. Mm -hmm. It's amazing what they're doing. Mm -hmm. and, and the fact that uh, also the one over in the States, they, they, they're repopulating oysters over in New York, mm. the billion, billion mm -hmm. oyster mm -hmm. project. That's amazing. Mm, that is amazing. Really is. But I, I don't see any other brands doing that. Mm. And, you know, that's why I like Oris. They're, they're different. They're quirky. Mm. What's their tagline? Go your own way. Yes, exactly. <laughs> they funny. certainly are. <laughs> it's they funny because the tagline are. sometimes don't always um, connect either. But that mm. does connect. And um, I, I actually, now you said, now you mention it, I did literally a couple of days ago get this, their climate report, their sustainability yeah. report, which I thought was really detailed, really interesting, mm. and, and done for, for, for the right reasons, yeah. not, not for, for, for coverage press that are no. to tick boxes. It felt no. honest, and, and that's right. That is how the watchers feel as well. That's um, right, yeah. So what's the obligation on you as a friend of the brand of Oris then? So how do you interact with them? Do you hear from them frequently? Do you come along to events? Do you manage get-togethers? Well, yeah, I mean, there is no obligation. I, I'm president of the Oris Social Club for London, so the obligation is I look after the Facebook page and the um, Instagram page, and that's mm -hmm. it. Mm -hmm. I do as much or as little as I want on God, I'm that. Gonna get, I'm going to get in on those comments now. Yeah. I'm going to start bringing some heat. I'm going to start bringing <laughs> no, some heat to those do uh, do comments. Uh, but, um, yeah. And we have um, competitions each month. We have get-togethers at the boutique. Mm -hmm. um, it's they're in pretty much infrequent, but um, it's good fun. It's good to interact with the members, see what they want. Mm -hmm. Whenever there's a project, or so whenever there's a watch launch, um, let them know on, on Facebook or on Instagram. And yeah, we're just basically keeping communication. And to be fair, I mean, there's 30, 35, 36, 37 chapters throughout the world i don't know any other brand who's done that mm. it's so it's so different you mm. know it's innovation and that's what i like they, cool. they are you know trying to interact with their members with this with the people who buy their watches it's brilliant absolutely brilliant and if you took us to a southwest um red bar event mm -hmm. southeast southeast shit. Yep. So that's southwest okay. there's not many cider there um, <laughs> <laughs> uh you're in kent um tell us what what, what sort of What's the what are the evenings like? Uh, what are people bringing along? What are people excited about these days? How often do you get together? Well, we try and have events each month. Mm -hmm. um, we've had um, literally last weekend in Brighton, we did the Best of British 
uh, which was 11 brands, 11 British brands uh, coming together in a hotel. We had a fantastic turnout. Um, the brands um, were, were over the moon, what we did, managed mm -hmm. to do. We had, um, you, you know, probably know all of the brands, Fears, <laughs> uh, Christopher Ward, uh, yeah. Studio Underdog, Isotope, um, uh, Zero West, uh, yeah. Elliot Brown, you know, usual oh, suspects, wow. and a couple, a couple other different yeah. ones, and and it was fantastic. So you know, I I got that going. Uh, took pretty much ten months to get that over mm. the line, mm. um, and you know, next month we've got an event with. I can tell you this because it's email has gone out. I believe <laughs> Hamilton's coming up. That's Fantastic. in Canterbury. Yeah. Um, we've got uh, other things happen, and we also do pub events. Mm -hmm. So people will bring um, a watch along or a couple of watches. You know, wherever we meet up in in Kent or Surrey mm -hmm. or Sussex, mm -hmm. and we just talk talk watches, have a drink, have a bite to eat, and just. You know, geek out on what people have worn. <laughs> uh, I mean, we've also had um, Picnic in the Park where we would actively ask people to bring their least value watch because, mm. you know, this is in London. We don't people want people mm. getting mugged. Mm. But, you know, so... But I bet the conversation was still as as um, divisive, passionate oh, and, and, and energised with them as yeah. it would have been with the uh, the big the big heavy hitters. Precisely, and that's what <laughs> we do. I mean, we, we don't discriminate, definitely not. And people like what they were like. Yeah. Who am I to judge somebody who's got a... Oh, what, do I, what don't I like? I can't say. <laughs> <laughs> you can say, go, no, 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 no. <laughs> you know, it's just my opinion, yeah. whatever it is. And, yeah, but that's, and that's, some... that's, why we, that's why we love it. Absolutely. And actually, before we started shooting as well, we mm -hmm. were talking about what you've got uh, your name down for. So uh, oh before, we, before we go, on, it's almost like Christmas morning. We're waiting yeah. to unbox these pet puppies here. But give us a quick uh, view on maybe one or two bits that you're excited about that are down the line that you're working towards. Uh, you're doing some financial planning for. Yeah, um, the first one I'm waiting for, which has been a couple of years, so I'm not too too unhappy about it. Uh, F. P. Jean um, Chronometre Nach, it's uh, their boutique edition, Mother of Pearl Dahl uh, in platinum. It's oh. just stunning. Again, it's one of those. Yeah, have to have it. Don't care. Francois Just take Paul, it. Did you hear that? <laughs> We've got the man waiting. He's on the list. He's oh, here in London. The boutique's about to open. Just opened. Open, yeah. Just opened. And this man's waiting. Yeah, please, please. But uh, yeah, we'll see. We'll yeah, see. I'm waiting nice. for the call for that. Very nice. Um, yeah, that, that's the main that's one. The one. Yeah, and it's always nice, I think, to again, like we have here with curation, to mm. sort of distill what those targets are because it's not it's quite it can, it can, it, this is a first world problem but it can get quite disorientating when you've yes. got a lot of things on your mind and you're like god how am i going to get this to work how am i going to and there's just loads of things going on but if you've got that one clear vision i think that's quite exciting absolutely quite nice. and you know it, I, I came across it by chance obviously i love f pigeon and everybody you know goes lumbering about the havana and, and mm. those but you know what, Kim? The funny thing is, you know, we're, we're sitting in Mayfair here actually, and I used to go like I used to hang around like a bad smell at William and Son when they were. Open. Did you ever pop in there? You must have. Yes. Remember on the corner there? It's now um, it's now Asprey. That's, yes, that's yeah, yeah. And honestly, the Havana. I remember thinking, I love that watch. Mm. I mean, I was I was early twenties. I, I couldn't even think about affording it, but it was there, ready mm. available. As was the whole lineup. Oh. As was De Bethune, As oh, was uh, uh, Lawn Ferry. As yeah. was uh, Ludwig Balois. As was Those the whole thing were there. It was yeah. unbelievable. And yeah. I remember Havana specifically thinking, "Wow, it's quite punchy there." Mm. But this is amazing. Yeah, yeah. Um, and how things have moved on, you know, yeah. 10, 15 years. And and it's a shame because the story of uh, William Son, like William Asprey, um, passionate collector, the mm. owner there. By all accounts, used to be the biggest buyer of watches every month in the oh, business, wow. and as a result, they went under because no one else was actually buying. So they were literally just ahead of the curve. And I think if they'd been around for a couple of years later, mm. they would have been inundated because they had all of the independence that people kind of got really excited about, or yeah. still excited about yeah, now. Um, God, can you imagine the queues for for wait lists for oh, well, I don't know well, for well, anything well. and anything from Jean oh, yeah. to yeah, yeah. Um, that's a real shame. MBNF. I mean, was, I mean, they actually, funnily enough, yeah. I don't think they might have been the only one that was missing, but they even had things like Roman Gelthier and others, you know, top, top, top stuff. But it's just, it's interesting how life works, how business works, yeah, how trends, yeah, trends and exactly. other things work. Um, Absolutely, it's all about trends. Talking of which, tell me yes. what, what we've got here, because trend-wise, we've got two big heavy hitters. Oh. We've got a Bulgari and we've got an Omega. Now, I'm going to start off with <laughs> the Omega. Yes. This is a piece 
which signifies that I have a problem. Okay. Um, it's all about the chase. It's all about what you want. Mm -hmm. And this is, um, they now call it a Tintin. Yes, I thought, I, I hoped it would be. I so hoped it would be. That is a piece which came out, I think, 2016. Mm -hmm. and, um, nobody liked it. Um, and nobody really gave it much interest, to yep. be perfectly honest, yep. until the story came out about, oh, it was going to be something different, and they had these dials, which they already made. So basically, it's a racing dial. It's a racing dial, It's yeah. a racing dial. And there's an element of handwork on it as well, no? Uh, only on the back, where the dif difference is that you've got the red, um, uh, okay. red writing as yep. opposed to standard black. Yep. But yeah, the uh, allegedly the original... Um, one was supposed to have a rocket on one of the hands going round, which is brilliant, but they couldn't get the the rights for for it, so they still stuck with the dials and and, and sold them as racing dials. Um, with that particular one, yeah, I mean, it was I saw it 2017. It was it was it was okay, but I had other things to buy at that yeah, point, yeah, yeah, yeah. and then um, I decided to go into my uh, boutique and Bond Street. Said, so, oh, do you have one? Because they were floating around. Yeah. You, you could get them. How many were made? Do we know? Was it, it wasn't um, limited edition? It, it wasn't limited speculation edition. Around. Speculation round about the 1700 mark. Yeah. And um, said, uh, they said, uh, no, they can't get any more because they were all sold. Apparently, there was one going. They had one left in the factory, mm -hmm. which was earmarked for Budapest. <laughs> so, so you flew out. I saw I flew out. Kev's <laughs> <laughs> there in Budapest and he's picking up. <laughs> it was so I contacted them. Yeah. Um, so they said, yeah, 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 we've got it coming in. They, they couldn't tell me when. Mm -hmm. So I just kept in contact with them, said I'll take it whenever it comes in. Yeah. And, um, and uh, yeah, when the Budapest flew in one day. No, you did. You did actually did oh, it. Yeah. Brilliant. Oh, yeah. Of course, God. yeah. God, no no sightseeing, just went straight, straight in, in and flew back out. <laughs> But yeah, and, but and, and, and you know the highlight for me is that you've still got the sticker on the back. Oh yeah, yeah, just to protect the red. Yeah, yeah, I don't yeah. Know if you can see that, but the man has kept the sticker on the back there because I know that Absolutely will probably fade. Mid. Yeah. Absolutely mid. But, I love uh, that. Those little, uh, little touches like a cool of the collector. Piece. I mean, yeah, I mean, you know, the, just before that, I did send an email out to. Yeah, this is when I, I really have a problem. Send an email out with um, certain references to all of the authorised dealers and um, Amiga stores European wide, I think even sent some to the States. Yeah. Had a list it's of like big, watches. Big game fishing. Big game fishing. Yeah. Seeing who's gonna come back in. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> and that's how I knew about um, that particular piece. They came back to me as well as um, the Bond Street said yeah they're definitely gonna get it. And the other piece which I did get from the fishing was a um, uh, original Apollo Suez um, meteorite dial. And that came out in 2010, and I got the email, sent that email 2017. Hmm. So it was stuck in somebody's safe in Portugal, not even on display, it was just there. And they said, yeah, we got, we got, it was on the so, list, so one of those. Minute, next morning you're off to Faro? Yeah, uh, no, I got that one sent, sent to me. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, but that was a really nice piece, but that was, because it was meteorite, it was so top heavy, mm. stainless steel case. Didn't sit right. No, it didn't no. sit right. So I got rid of that one, mm. and now they're at twenty k now. So you're not af you're not afraid to bond with it, and if yeah, it doesn't work, it doesn't then move work. on. Yeah, exactly, yeah. exactly. I mean, I kept it. If I kept it now, it'd be worth twenty grand, mm. which is yeah. But at the end of the day, <laughs> it didn't sit with me. So yeah, I love that. I love that journey. You know, I think that um, period of uh, years. Mm even decades where you start to develop an understanding of yourself you, you go in you think you know exactly what you want but yeah. actually that the beauty of it is in that sort of waxing period over the years you're like no no actually that's not quite right that's mm. not quite for me or you find a, a bit of a grail like that you yeah. wear it and you're like actually there isn't an, an issue here no and only someone right. else who probably owns one yeah. who's had the experience will re resonate with it yeah which absolutely. is quite interesting because yeah. you see the photos online you're like yeah, it's, it's yeah. good but actually you've got to wear the damn thing absolutely. and then you start to learn yeah so that one wasn't for me which is a, which is a Good and bad thing, so I invested You've had your the money. time with it, a bit like um, fishing in some respects. Yeah, you bring, yeah, bring it up, back. you caught it, put it back in, you Absolutely. had your time with it. I think that's also another part of collecting that mm. people don't talk about very often. Something I've experienced is it's lovely to have the thing and to wear it, to enjoy it, but sometimes it's okay to, to let it go to as well. To let it go, yeah. And that's, that's, that's interesting. Yeah, so yeah, that was nice, but 
Tintin Amiga. all day awesome, long. Awesome. I mean, I wore that to. I've been fortunate enough to to go to the um, factory over in Amiga once, mm. and I've met the head watchmaker, really mm. nice guy, and he says. Out of all of them, that's the one he would want. He never got it, but mm. that's what he wants, mm. the Tintin. It's standout. I mean, they say, I can remember reading articles years ago, like, you know, if you rock up to, to, to a get-together and you've got a, a Speedmaster on, there's that instant sort of respect for you. Mm. For, you you're a bit deeper than, than most. And this is deep... A level below that, and then a little bit... This is, this is sort of like, this is, this is where you're at when you know yeah. things are... Yeah. I love you, it. You've gone I real, gone in it. real hard. <laughs> yeah, love it. Very absolutely fortunate love it. to get it. Well done. That's, I can imagine that looks great on you, and it looks it like does. it's well worn as well. Yeah. Um, Bulgari, interesting choice. I don't know what's in there. Right. But I think it's interesting just to touch on Bulgari as a brand absolutely. because they've been they've been smashing it yeah. in a whole other way to maybe Aorus in a, in a sort of a, a high price point pushing the categories from. Um, you know, ultra thin complication. Mm -hmm. really. That's that's the key for them, and they've done amazing work. They're no oh, longer mm -hmm. just a, 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 an over-the-top yeah. Italian jeweler. Yeah, exactly. I mean, uh, their, their designs are fantastic. And I do like the female Serpente it's watches. Amazing. Oh. amazing, amazing, amazing. Oh my god. Mm. Yeah, my wife. I love the, the adverts actually. <laughs> and the woman that advert, whoever that is. Wow, on the campaign that jewel. Oh, it's one fun, fantastic. Yeah, absolutely fantastic. <laughs> it's, in, it's 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 all it's a bit like when you walk into their boutique. It's 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 they've captured that you can almost smell the energy the italian energy it's, it's all encompassing it's it's kind of over the top but mm. the colors are so vibrant yes they are. it's very italian there's marble everywhere yep. it's like you've walked into almost like a a, a sort of a i don't know a, i don't know a, 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 something over the top that's just full of joy and passion and oh energy. definitely i love going to those places i mean going to bond street and and obviously sloan street as well and of the, the boutique in Selfridges as well. And it's, just it's not the set. Fun. You've not got the set point, the uh, aluminium in there. The no. left-hand drive. No. Ah. I did go to the launch of that. Did though. you? Yeah, and I met... Um, the tennis player. Uh, what? Yeah, the tennis player, mm. yeah. Oh, Good, nice chap. Nice chap. I did really recently nice. pick one of those off, actually. You did? I should have, I should have worn it if I'd known you'd... <laughs> <laughs> Pure fun. Yeah, absolutely. But, is it an octofinissimo? It, like, it is. It's an octofinissimo. Right, you it is. Oh, thank you very much. <laughs> it is. Um, and the story behind this is... Um, I knew I was going to retire, so mm. uh, basically I put my name down for, like everybody else, a Rolex um, Daytona, mm -hmm. and uh, this was... Oh, Black Dial, White Dial? White Dial. Okay, oh, there we go. And um, I knew it was, it was hard, even eight years ago, nine years ago, it was hard, but they said, oh, three years. Mm. That's fine, that's all right. You're still waiting for the call? Uh, don't. Um, <laughs> basically, hey. my... My name's been taken off the list. Oh no! Yeah. Why is that? They just, um, they, because there was no list in the first place. Basically, yeah. Basically, we all know that, don't we? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So uh, I was a bit disappointed. Uh, but so, you fall on your feet. Yeah. I thought I need a, a watch to celebrate that I've stopped work. Yep. And that's uh, one or two hundred. Wow. With, with the gold, rose gold hands. That is so sexy. That is so sexy. Yeah, I wanted that one particularly because of the, the gold. Oh, the gold the really does pumps. punch. Yeah, yeah, it's got a real punch to it, and that sandblasted case and bracelet, and you know the thing. And and, and I've I've had one or two of these in the past, and um, I absolutely love them. But you've got to handle one to fully appreciate yeah, it in the metal because yeah. it's like nothing else. Nothing else. It really is. It's stunning. I love it. Absolutely Incredible love it. Incredible engineering, Italian flair. Then that sort of. Swiss watchmaking pedigree in, mm. in there because this micro rotor and the movement so big and it feels and as I understand it and I might be wrong but they design the movement and then the case also so the movement really fills the case yeah. beautifully incredible absolutely incredible so I was very happy but I didn't get the Daytona very happy I'm still on the list for one I've gone somewhere else <laughs> yeah. I will see I'm not I'm not in any fast any, if any I get it yet. if I get it if I don't it's probably when I do fully retire I'll get that but that in the meantime is just Incredible, the work of art. It it's a really work of is. art. It's you know I've said it before, and it's a little bit corny. I don't know if I heard it from uh, from their team or not, but there is an architectural element to this design. I mean, mm -hmm. look at the case, the way it's got. It's it's um is it Canaletto that the old artist that used to draw the the the, the cityscapes of Italy, where you'd right. see the different edges. It was just a work of art, and 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 this has got so many edges and depths to it, and and it's. It's got more going on, I'd say, in it from a case perspective than almost any other 
watch out there. Yeah. And it feels like the momentum's been building behind it since it's got how many awards? I think 10 yeah, different world records. Like 10, just, 10 different GPHG awards. awards yeah. Yes. And yeah, world yeah. records and other things. So yeah. it just feels like it's just, in some ways, a little bit like Aorus, that it's maybe popular amongst us in the community, but it's just waiting to fully get out into, you know, when, when, when are people going to say, you know, actually, I do want my, I do want my wedding watch to mm. be a, a Bulgari, you know, and I don't it, want it to be a, a Daytona. Yeah. Yeah. Are we moving towards that? I think I we think are. I think we are. Absolutely. I mean, that's, it's now, what, 11 years old? Mm. The 10th anniversary mm. was last year. Yeah. 11 years old, that physically design. They have just knocked it out of the park. They oh, I'm really so pleased have. you bought that. That is so cool. <sighs> I, d I didn't expect that. I really didn't. Oh. Stick it on for us. Just have a quick yeah, look on absolutely. the rest of it. It's absolutely beautiful. It is beautiful. So the so the limited. What, this is one of two hundred. But what yeah. was the reason for the limitation? What, what oh, were they doing it for? It was. It was basically, I think, a celebration of the um, the retailers. Okay. So you could only get it through retail. This particular uh, okay. watch. So it's a boutique exclusive. Uh, for retailers. For retailers. Yeah. Okay. But I managed to get it through through the uh, Bulgari boutique. Um, but yeah, it oh, is. That pops that really pops. It is on you. beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> well done, sir. Yeah. Well so, done. Yeah. Well, yeah, I done. love it. This this one definitely will not be leaving no. my collection, and it will be with me if there is a fire. Absolutely. That is like, absolutely so cool. cool. It's so cool. Have you had anyone um, while you've been wearing it? Have you had anyone ask you anything about it? Before? Oh God, all the time. Really? Absolutely. Yeah. Because it is unusual. It yeah. really is. Wherever I wear it. Um, if I go to places like um, AP House, mm -hmm. the guys up there, they love it. Mm. They, they, they see everything. Yeah. They see everything. <laughs> uh, Rainbow Daytonas, you know, the whole works. And people come in, you know, flashing the money. Mm. But the, all, the, all the proper serious guys in the retail, um, I'm just saying AP, but there are other people, Bulgari, of course, um, Amiga, even when I do go to Red Bar events, Everybody gravitates to this because mm. it is so different. Mm. Um, the design is absolutely you know, it's, it's so unique. Did you know you wanted not to finish mode, or was it the fact that this combination with the gold markers um, popped up, and you're like, "Well, that's the one I, I need to have." Uh, I think it was the latter. Yeah, definitely came up, and with the gold markers. I mean, mm. I've seen and I've worn the the, the standard one with the grey stroke black mm -hmm. markers. I have to say it's a bit flat, mm. um, but as soon as this one came up, definitely wanted it. I mean, I did look at getting the, um, do you remember the uh, tattoo version they did? With Mo Coppoletta? Yes. Yeah, yeah. I looked at getting that. Very cool. um, that was cool. And of course, the Breaking Revolution did the... Um, the full Loom one? The Full Loom, the yeah. Nuclear. They've done some awesome collaborations. And, yeah. and then the Tado Ando the yeah. series, three, the Triptych series, Tado Ando. Yeah, the blue one's nice, Very the silver cool. one, maybe yeah, not. not sure. Not sure. With the emanating circles. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, I mean, they do do some great collaborations. And, and um, Breaking Revolution, I missed out on that one. I may have to, I may have to go, that, go down that And this route, is your somewhere. only... Green, yes, in the current. Yeah, mm. um, we'll see what comes. We'll mm -hmm. see what they're, what yeah. they're producing <laughs> uh, next couple of years. But yeah, this is just words well, found me. Okay, there you go. I love it. Apart. Absolutely love it. Knocked so, it so in many ways, what you've got here because you, you're now taking these two. It's like Desert Island Disc. You're yes. taking these two with you. You've got a cheeky kicker in there. You've yes. Got yeah. Um, but you, but you, 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 you're more on the sporty side, I'd say. I mean, it's difficult mm. to say what the Optifinissimo actually is. Yeah, I mean, it feels dressier to yeah. me, but it's not really not a really, sports no. watch in the same way these would be. But you've got all bases covered, which is absolutely. Fantastic. I mean, I, I wear it basically as a dress watch. Whenever mm. I go to a black tie event, I generally wear this, as opposed to um, I don't think it's like Grand Seiko, or maybe I wear it as a as a black tie event. Um, but yeah, it's it's generally this, one hundred percent. Yeah. Super, super cool. Thank yeah. you very, my pleasure, very much for bringing them all in. Thank you. And lovely to chat with you. And you, Justin. <laughs> and you. Guys, let us know in the comments below what you thought of these three watches from Kevin. Thanks as always for joining us. Mm -hmm.